don't worry about food. Do you have enough top ramen <laughs> in your cabinets? That's such a joke. Please don't feed your kids top ramen. Don't do what I do. This girl is on fire. Hi everyone, it's Olivia. Um, I'm a little nervous about this video because I haven't done this before, but it's been on my heart for quite a long time. And you know when you get one of those ideas and it's big and good and then you get a little scared and then you don't do it. Um, so here I am. I have been, it's been put on my heart to really share a little bit more about who I am and my experiences just simply to encourage. There, I, I talk a lot over and over, almost at nauseum, about being yourself being authentic and being unique to who you are. And if you truly do that, if you can master that, then you have no competition at all because no one can do what you do the way you do it. There are thousands of branding experts out there. There are hundreds and hundreds of um, personal branding strategists. And even down specifically, there are hundreds of women personal branding strategists who focus on women. So that's a lot of competition, right? But if I am authentic in who I am, then whatever message I have to send out there, no one else can really say it like I can. And no one else has quite the same experience as me. So then I've eliminated my competition. So I want to encourage you guys to do that. But this, so this is me doing that. This is me uh, walking the walk <laughs> that I talk, right? So what I, I've been uh, on my heart is to just really um, share with you what, what encourages me as an entrepreneur. And I um, have been an entrepreneur all my life. I started selling uh, handmade goods when I was 13 and just, I love it so much. And having all these ideas, um, as you guys know, as entrepreneurs, we have a lot of ideas. And a lot of times we're serial entrepreneurs and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, sometimes that can get a bad connotation, but I've been an entrepreneur for, for a long time. But I also worked in corporate. I worked, um, I guess you can't call an ad agency corporate. It's not corporate at all. But I worked in an ad agency for well over a decade and then um, went back to being an entrepreneur. And I thank God so much because um, particularly in a couple different times where I left my job two different times to start my own business, I was really forced to do so. Um, you know, the first time my son, I had just had my son, he was only 11 months old, he got really sick and had RSV. And if you guys know what that is, it can be very minimal to really, really serious. And he was in and out of the hospital for over two weeks and was finally sent home on oxygen. And I had burned through all my vacation, burned through sick time, and I really kind of had no choices um, except hire someone to come in our house to watch him while he was on oxygen. Etc. And I had already had this business plan and this business idea in my mind, and I felt like God was just saying, I'm giving you permission now, and kind of like pushing you, you know, like a, a mama bird pushes the baby birds out the nest. I kind of was pushed to make this really tough decision. So the second time, similar thing, where I was really kind of pushed to leave my job, and it was such a blessing, such a blessing. And people say, um, you know, whether a company takes a, a turn or you don't um, feel like you fit there anymore or they're laying people off, whatever it may be, and you end up jobless, my pastor always says, um, praise God. <laughs> That's what he always says to people are like, what? I just lost my job. And he's like, praise, play, praise God, because now you really can do whatever God has called you to do. And you can take that leap. You're kind of being forced or given that little like, yeah, you could do it wink from heaven that, that you can move forward and do this big thing that's really scary. In those times, money has been really tough. Money has been really hard. And I know that uh, entrepreneurs out there can relate to this, that, you know, you work really, really hard. And if you don't get up in the morning and get out of bed and work and get the work done, the money doesn't come in. So a very, very different lifestyle and mindset than you know, working for someone and you get the paycheck, you know, you can kind of do bare minimum and sneak by occasionally. Or if you're sick, you know, you can not show up as, as your own business owner. That's not the case. Um, I have gone through so many different things and I'm not going to go into everything, but 
I'll share a spe couple specific instances when it comes to money and financials and in that starting up is really difficult, starting your clientele, and there were months where I had no idea how I was going to make it. I didn't know how, not only I was going to pay the rent, but getting real tight <laughs> down to how am I going to put food on the table for my kids. And I was a single mom for so long, and so you don't have the luxury of having a second income when your entrepreneur income is waning or clients haven't paid or they're late paying, all of these different things. And I will say this, though, in, you know, the six years that I've been doing that and having to kind of, like, hunker down and I tell my kids, like, all right, it's, you know, we're going to eat ramen. And it's so sad. Ramen is so bad for you. It's so sick. My kids love it. And they're like, yeah, ramen night. So, hey, whatever. But, but you know, you got to hunker down. You got to do what you got to do. And then there's some other months where things are so good. And you really have to just kind of ride that roller coaster. But through it all, God has always provided. He's always provided. So I, I want to encourage you in that. It's to, when the, when the money gets tight, hunker down and know that a way will be provided if you trust God. So here, I want to say for, for everyone out there, Matthew, I'm reading my Bible right now. And again, this is something I've never done on video. This is scary. It's a little nerve-wracking. Matthew chapter 6 is an amazing chapter. The whole chapter is really good. So I want to encourage any entrepreneur out there to read that full chapter. But specifically, I want to work, uh, read where it talks about um, how God is providing. And if he provides for the animals out there, if he provides for the birds out there, how much is he going to then provide for you? So, I need to find that scripture. Oh, I just had it! See, when the camera rolls, you just kind of lose your thought process in your mind. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm going to read this. And it really just talks about, not don't stress on money. Don't, don't stress on money. And I... Um, always encourage people to charge what you're worth, and that's that's a whole nother therapy session. <laughs> that's a whole nother um, video on charging what you're worth and making sure that you're charging premium prices because you're premium, and the the knowledge that you have is very valuable and important. But in that, sometimes we get too focused on money and making more money and trying to pay our bills. We get really wrapped up in it, and I have a hard time sleeping sometimes at night where I will lay awake thinking about all of the stuff I need to do or should do or clients I need to follow up with and pitch and so-and-so so hasn't paid me and, and you know, my kids need school supplies and, oh, you know, all this stuff. Chill. And I'm going to read this for you. Matthew 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and man, and you can't serve God and man, you can't serve God and money. It will drive you crazy. I've done it. Verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, that ye sh what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor ye for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than remnant? So don't worry about Food. Do you have enough top ramen <laughs> in your cabinets? That's such a joke. Please don't feed your kids top ramen. Don't do what I do. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Behold, this is verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? So God has created us in his image. He's, he's made a spitting image of himself, right? It's like us feeding the squirrels outside. And by the way, my neighbor feeds a squirrel right out here, and he's a menace. He's horrible. Oh, my gosh. But it's like us feeding the squirrels and not feeding our own kids. Who does that? Not God. <laughs> you are not a squirrel. You're one of God's children. So don't, don't stress about it. Verse 27, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit into his stature? 28, 
And I take ye thought for remnant, consider the, the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 30. It's getting good. It's getting good. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not be much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So that is my message to you. All of that rambling. I hope at least it was a little entertaining or that you got something out of this video. The first of many, have faith. Know that God is in control. Know that God sees you in your hard work. Trust Him. And somehow it will all work out and ends will somehow meet. Don't make money in the stressing of I need to hit six figures this month or five figures or even, you know, four figures, three figures, three figures this month. <laughs> Don't stress about that stuff. God's got it. You have to put him first, and you have to have faith in him, and everything else will fall into place. So, let me just pray for you real fast. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Heavenly Father God, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to speak your word, to minister to your people, and to provide a message in a way that only I can deliver it and to bring it. Thank you for giving that charge on my life to preach the gospel and to encourage women entrepreneurs to really just move forward in their dreams, to have faith in you and to do what they love. Lord God, I ask that you take away all worry, all fear, and all anxiety around money and around growing our businesses and making ends meet, Father God. We know that you will provide for us, that you will feed us and that you will clothe us. We know that if we serve you and put you first, that all of our ends will meet and everything will come together, Father God. I thank you for abundance. I thank you for growing businesses out there. I thank you for the single mom who's listening to this video who may not know how she's going to put food on the table this month, Father God. Bring her the clients. Bring her the speaking opportunities. Bring her people in her life that she needs to grow where she can flourish, where she can become um, just abundant, Father God, in you, Lord God, where she can pay her bills, Father God. Lord, I thank you so much for growing and prospering your people. Lord God, I, I just decree and declare that businesses are growing, Lord, and that new opportunities are falling into people's laps, Lord God, that even though we don't even look for them, um, that the doors just open and emails just come in for amazing opportunities. We thank you in advance for allowing us to uh, move forward and, and have no lack, Father God. You have not called us to struggle, Lord God, but you've called us to be prosperous and happy and abundant and fulfilled and have no wants and desires. Lord, if you are providing for the, the sparrow and the lilies of the valley and the squirrel <laughs> next door, Father God, I know that you will provide for us. Again, I thank you for your word. I thank you for all of the entrepreneurs out there in this struggle. Lord God, we, we just lay our businesses down to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching again, and tune in for the next video. This is going to get easier for me, I promise. Have a great and blessed day.